Hello there, Parshal Mathis side bringing you some chess classics. If you are new to this channel, then don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. If you are already subscribed, then do press the bell icon for notifications. And if you like my work, then do consider supporting me on Patreon and PayPal because your support is my motivation which keeps me going. All the links are in the description. You can connect me through them. Through them. And so, the Lindris Abbey Rapid Challenge 2020 has come to an end and Danny Dubo beats Hikaru Nakamura in the finals. So congratulations to Dubo and as well as not only winning the tournament, he also won $45,000. So that's a double joy for the young bloke. Now, with all the tournaments set aside, I always like to delve into the classics as I previously did with 1984 championship match between Anatoly Capo and Gary Kasparov. And this time, I would be looking at some several individual games, individual brilliancies played by some of the best players in the world. And to start with, to start with, I would be like to taking look at games from Gary Kasparov, his top 15 chess games, which in my opinion he is, is indeed the best chess player uh, ever played the game, the revolutionary chess player. So the game that I would be looking at number 15 is the game between Jero and Piquet from the Netherlands and uh, Gary Kasparov from 1989. Tilburg 1989 Interpolis tournament and here Pickett was white, Kisparov was black. So if you give me time then I uh, flip the board to Kisparov's side. There we go. Not many players show the board from the black side but since this series is totally dedicated to Kisparov we will, we will be seeing it through his side. So Pickett is white, he opens with 1d4. Knight f6, Knight f3, g6, uh, c4. So when you see Knight f3 instead of Knight c3, this is always a giveaway for anti Grunfeld. You're going like anti d5, but some players do play uh, d5 in this position. And Kasparov opts for this King's Indian opening, the so called Kazakh variation which is acceptable and now Pickett transforms it into the orthodox uh, King's Indian defense. So there we go e5 and if you see if you think that you're gonna win the pawn not to be because knight and uh, knight takes and if you take with the knight then bishop takes and material is even since the queen is defended by the rook. So Pickett also castles knight c6 and d5 closing the structure in the center so knight has to go somewhere, e7 is the better option and now Kasparov's intention is pretty simple to play knight d7 and then f5 which is always king's indian theme to push towards the uh, king side and close this structure on f4 like that. So there we go, knight e1 from picket, knight d7 as the plan, bishop e3, f5 and f5 is simply played with the intention of playing knight here a or either to play pawn here basically you might see pawn capture if pawn takes and then f4 just closing this now bishop forever f3 giving this bishop some room f4 there we go as according to the plan bishop f2 tucking back and now g5 so kasparov is playing on the on the king's side, that's a good move indeed. G5 is pushing on the uh, king's side and having this dark square bishop, the king's bishop, this king is already very safe. Not to forget these two knights are here right with the king. So there's always no tension uh, pushing these pawns down the board. B4, so Pickett tries to take claim on the queen's side. Knight f6 just to um, have g4, just to have a control at g4. So that's a good move. 
this just to support g4 basically although it is defended by these pieces but g4 might happen in future once one of them moves c5 so he's trying to break on the queen side knight g6 Kasparov continues his plan on the king side just uh, coordinating his pieces so that he can get a good initiate uh, so that he can initiate a good attack on the king side and here he could have played a4 just try to put more pressure on the queen side but then Kasparov would have gone h5 and suddenly the play would have looked pretty interesting with one player charging on the queen side another one charging on the king side and it would have been basically who wins the battle but especially when you try, uh, charge on the king side and the the defended the defensive king is castled on the king side then chances chances are that the player who is charging towards the king side would be better off so here he tries to liquidate or simplify the position instead of playing a4 he plays cd6 which i think was a mistake uh, an inaccuracy i would say because after c takes d, uh, d6 suddenly this file is wrap open and the queen side attack of white has suddenly fizzled out with two pawns and there isn't no majority attack on the queen side both players have two pawns on the queen side so uh, don't see a way that uh, how white will now go since his uh, since Kasparov's attack on the king side looks pretty ominous and uh, as i said the fizzled out the queen side attack is totally fizzled out for the white so he tries rook c1 taking the open file and uh, activating his rook that's a good move rook f7 that's another good defensive move and in the future if this knight moves then he can play rook c7 and that would be better for black a4 bishop f8 a5 bishop d7 so he's trying to basically stop this and also to initiate a6 of his own to stop knight b5 but here he could have played king h1 but he was in a bit hurry he plays knight b5 and what does bishop f8 do as you can realize it supports this pawn and still initi keep initiating the attack g4 and uh, you can see this pawn isn't defended now since this knight has moved so if pawn takes you take the pawn on e4 and again uh, white's attack or excuse me black's attack rolls on on the king side knight c7 attack uh, trying to take the rook but kasparov says i don't care he plays g3 extremely strong move traps this bishop and you think that you can get away taking the rook but not to be uh, probably he should have taken this pawn after f takes uh, bishop takes the position won't have been better but certainly won't have been worse off either but he goes knight takes a8 and he underestimated uh, the next move that Kasparov had up his sleeve knight h5 brilliant move and just so he keeps on attacking he's not rushing things he's not rushing taking this knight and the the best thing that i like about this game that Kasparov was didn't look in a hurry at all in this game and it was uh, basically what a brilliant sense of judgment that Kasparov has of the positions it's pretty amazing when he when you give him an invitation to attack he will literally bounce on you like a leopard and um, then you have no chance he tries king h1 to solve his problems because after g takes f2 rook takes f2 there comes another shot in the arm knight g3 check brilliant move indeed and uh, it's not easy to deal with this move at all if you take then pawn takes and 
no matter what you do this knight might come or maybe queen h4 the line of the queen is nine of the queen is open here yeah. you might be in uh, deadly trouble pawn takes pawn takes attacks the rook and rook moves then queen h4 is game over so you cannot take the knight this king has to move to g1 he has no other choice and now queen takes a8 so he gets the time and, and again you can see the attack is so tremendous here that even after you take pawn takes rook come rook goes back there's already a chance to play queen d8 queen h4 and with this close structure there is absolutely no mobility for white to even try to defend this poor soul so he tries bishop c4 um, to gain some mobility not only that defending himself for this then comes a6 good move the stopping b5 and creating more and more pressure and uh, there is also a tactical threat that is here in this position and uh, with this move queen d3 he totally missed that he totally missed that tactical threat obviously if he had taken it then already there is a lot of time to play queen d8 queen h4 with absolutely no difference as i said to this poor soul but queen d3 what did he miss he missed this queen a7 and again if you take then pawn takes and this rook cannot even move because of this pin you can see this long distance relationship between this queen and the king the queen opposite queen of the king so he tries b5 in desperation a takes b5 bishop takes b5 and now a cute finish to this incredible game can you guess the move can you guess the final punch that kasparov gave to pick it if you found that out brilliant and if you want to enjoy the show knight h1 what a cute move this is to finish the game off and here picket resigned the rook is pinned attacked twice and king takes knight and if king takes knight then queen takes rook is simply end of the game and uh, it doesn't matter whether you take the bishop my eyes are on your king and here uh, Kasparov wins this beautiful game against Yevim Pickett and this was game number 15 of the series my favorite Gary Kasparov's games because uh, for such a legend it is very difficult to compile a list of his brilliancies that he has played throughout his chess career but I tried to figure out some 15 games which which not only were his uh, best games but also the games which had uh, which i liked the most uh, personally so there might be some subjectivity but never mind if you have some suggestions then uh, they are most welcome i would be like i would like to uh, analyze those games as well and to look at those games from my angle from even from kasparov's angle as well and uh, I hope you like the video. I hope you like my analysis. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Cheers. Bye.